Britain said on Thursday that three Iranian vessels tried to block a British-owned tanker which was navigating the Strait of Hormuz, but ultimately backed off when confronted by Royal Navy's warship HMS Montrose. A British government spokesman said in a statement, HMS Montrose was forced to position himself between the Iranian vessels and British heritage and issue verbal warnings to the Iranian vessels, which then turned away. Iran's foreign minister, Mohammad Javad Zarif, dismissed the allegations that Iran sought to block the ships as worthless. U.S. General Mark Milley, who is President Donald Trump's nominee to become chairman of the U.S. military's Joint Chiefs of Staff, told Congress that there appeared to be an attempt by Iran's small naval vessels to take over a British commercial vessel. The incident took place a week after British Royal Marines seized an Iranian tanker. Britain states that the tanker was violating sanctions by bringing oil to Syria. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes why Iran's Navy backed out when confronted by Britain's HMS Montrose. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by War Thunder. If you are, like us, fascinated by military vehicles and technology, I recommend you give War Thunder a try. It's a military vehicle combat game which you can download and play for free on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One with cross-platform support. It has a huge variety of more than 1,200 playable aircraft, tanks, helicopters, and ships from the 1930s to the 1990s, which you can take to battle on land, in the air, and at sea on more than 80 theaters of war. War Thunder has been kind enough to offer all Defense Updates viewers a special bonus, which will grant you a free premium tank or aircraft and three days of premium account time for registering using our link in the description below. So take the plunge and join more than 20 million players from around the world. Tensions in the region escalated after the U.S. government, under President Trump, unilaterally withdrew from Iran nuclear deal and imposed stringent sanctions against Iran. The deal offered Iran relief from sanctions in exchange for limits on its nuclear program. Trump administration is of the view that Iran is misusing the deal. Recent months have seen multiple spikes in hostilities, which include U.S. accusing Iran for a series of attacks on commercial ships and Iran downing of American RQ-4A Global Hawk drone. Britain moved into the crisis when its Royal Marines captured an Iranian tanker, Grace 1, off the coast of Gibraltar last week. Although the United Kingdom has not imposed sanctions on Iran, but it, along with EU members, have sanctions that prohibit selling oil to Iran's ally Syria. A senior Iranian military commander had threatened Britain and the United States by saying that they would regret detaining the vessel. Since then, reports have emerged that Iran is contemplating some retaliatory actions. The Strait of Hormuz is a strait between the Persian Gulf and the Gulf of Oman. It provides the only sea passage from the Persian Gulf to the open ocean. It's one of the world's most strategically important choke points. On the north coast lies Iran, and on the south coast the United Arab Emirates and Muzandam an exclave of Oman. At its narrowest, the strait has a width of only 21 nautical miles, or 39 kilometers. Around 33 percent of the world's liquefied natural gas and almost 20 percent of the total global oil production passes through the strait, making it one of the most important sea routes. Because of its narrow width, it's kind of a choke point. Small missile boats and fast attack vessels, which can maneuver easily in these waters, can be used to harass large warships as well as commercial vessels. Iran has invested in these kind of small vessels and has developed strategies to deploy them effectively in the strait. It's recognized that Iran has a decent flotilla of these vessels that can carry out operations in the strait on short notice. Iran's naval capability, especially its capacity to defend the strait, has been acknowledged widely. In a September 11, 2008 report, the Washington Institute for the Near East Policy said that in the last two decades since the Iraqi imposed war on Iran, the IRGC has excelled in naval capabilities and is able to wage unique asymmetric warfare against larger naval forces. According to the report, the IRGC Navy has been transformed into a highly motivated, well-equipped and well-financed force and is effectively in control of the world's oil lifeline, the Strait of Hormuz.
The current HMS Montrose is the eighth of the 16-ship Type 23, or Duke, class of frigates of the Royal Navy, named after the Duke of Montrose. She was laid down in November 1989 by Yarrow Shipbuilders on the Clyde and was launched on the 31st of July 1992. Type 23 form the core of the Royal Navy's destroyer and frigate fleet and serve along with the Type 45 destroyers. Originally designed for anti-submarine warfare in the North Atlantic, the Royal Navy's Type 23 frigates have been used as a multi-mission platform. The versatility of base design and several upgrades have kept them relevant since they were first deployed operationally. Thirteen Type 23 frigates remain in service with the Royal Navy at present. Three vessels have been sold to the Chilean Navy. HMS Montrose has a length of 133 meters and displaces around 4,900 tons. It can reach speeds in excess of 28 knots or 52 kilometers per hour, which is around 32 miles per hour. HMS Montrose is equipped with multiple sensors, which include Type 997 Artisan 3D radar, Thales Underwater Systems Type 2050 Medium Range Bow Mounted Sonar, and Type 2031Z Very Low Frequency Passive Search Toad Array Sonar. Countermeasure systems include four CNAT Outfit DLB decoys and a Type 182 Toad Torpedo decoy. HMS Montrose is armed with eight Harpoon surface-to-surface -surface missiles in two four-cell launchers. Harpoon is a medium-range anti-ship missile using inertial and active radar guidance. It has 32-cell Seawolf GWS 26 VLS canisters for 32 Seawolf or Sea Scepter missiles for anti-air warfare. Seawolf has a range of 10 kilometers or 6.2 miles whereas Sea Scepter has range of 25 kilometers or 15 and a half miles. HMS Montrose is equipped with a single BAE Systems RO Defense 114 mm Mark 8 gun with a range of 27 kilometers against surface and 6 kilometers against airborne targets. It has two 30 mm DS-30M Mark II gun systems. DS-30M Mark II system consists of 30 mm Mark 44 Bushmaster II cannon mounted on an automated mount with an electro-optic fire control system. Apart from these, it has two mini guns and four general purpose machine gun. The ships have four 324 mm torpedo tubes carrying BAE Systems Stingray lightweight torpedoes. Stingray has a depth of 750 meters and a range of 11 kilometers. HMS Montrose can carry a single Lynx Mark 8 helicopter. The Naval Super Lynx has anti-surface warfare, anti-submarine warfare, search and rescue capabilities. The Strait of Hormuz is tactically suited for asymmetric warfare because it's a choke point. Iran has hundreds of fast boats, some of which carry anti-ship missiles, whereas others carry suicide payloads. Being small in size, they can be maneuvered easily, and the high speed makes them a difficult target. Multiple vessels of this kind attacking a warship from different directions could be difficult to defend against. The Pentagon's Millennium Challenge exercise, which was held in 2002, brought the issue to mainstream attention, though the threat that the small boats pose to major warships has been apparent for some time. In that controversial exercise, Small fast boats carrying suicide payloads inflicted heavy damage on U.S. naval forces. But since then, many adjustments have been made to the operational tactics of U.S. and Allied navies as per the findings of the exercise, and they are much better prepared. It's evident that HMS Montrose possesses a solid punch and is well equipped to counter the threat posed by these boats. In case of a skirmish, HMS Montrose would have smothered the Iranian vessels in no time, and this is the reason they backed off. But it's to be understood that these small attack crafts can be quite a handful for commercial vessels, and hence these may be escorted by British, American, and EU forces in the coming days. It remains to be seen how things pan out. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section.
This will help us improve.